I'm Ineas Alea from TolerateDCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to create this. Okay, so that's a pretty cool logo introduction animation and you'll learn how to do that today. So before we get started and you don't feel like following this tutorial and you just want to edit this template to yeah, make it your own with your own text and your own logo, that's also possible and very easy to do. Um, you can just buy this template on our website for a small fee and in return you will get this project file where you should just change the text, change the logo, uh, a video will be added to that um, sale as well so you get a tutorial on how to edit that file. Um, so if you feel like doing that, go ahead and do that, that also supports our channel. So uh, for the people that do want to follow this tutorial, let's get started. So the first thing I did is created a new composition of Full HD. Ten seconds long seems all right, and click OK. Then I created a new solid background layer, so uh, make it black and background for BG. Okay, and then I created a new solid again, and I created a white solid this time, and I renamed this to Circle Animation. There we go. Then what I did is I chose the ellipse tool here, and with Shift and Control, I dragged a circle like this. So the only thing that I did was make sure that I was in the center, so I just undid that. So just get into, into the center of your composition like this. And then click, hold Ctrl and Shift and drag one out like so. You can also um, change the mask to none. It's not that important, but for now. Then go to Effects and Presets. Go and find Stroke. That's under Generate Stroke. Drag that stroke onto our solid and then you will see that it automatically detects um, the mask that is applied to the solid, so the mask 1. And then you can just change the paint style to untransparent. And there we go, we have our, if you're going to increase the brush size, you're going to see your circle. So I'm going to change my resolution to full for now so you can see easily uh, what we're talking about. And then it's just a, um, yeah, it's a matter of playing with these two points here, the start and end point. So let's do that and go to the end point and just put that to zero. Or what we can do is put the start, stop and the start button to 100. So now we have a start and end of 100%. Move ahead like one second. And change the start to zero. So now it's going to make an animation. Uh, like this to complete a circle. So press U on the keyboard to reveal these keyframes and then you will see here at the end make the end at 0%. So now if we're going to see the animation we are actually not going to see anything because the end point is finishing as fast as the start point is starting. So if that doesn't make any sense if you're going to select these two keyframes and you're going to offset them a bit you're going to get like half a circle like so. So that's pretty cool. And that's what we were looking for. And once you have done that, select all the keyframes, gen, right click on these keyframe, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And now they're going to start uh, slowly and end slowly again. So now we have this animation. And now it's just a matter of duplicating them and pressing M on the keyboard, uh, on the mask, double clicking on that mask and holding control and shift and make it smaller and then see the animation for yourself um, and then also play like with the end for example um, you can make it like this here okay duplicate that one mask tool double click on a mask tool make it smaller and you can actually actually also rotate the mask tool if you want to so may maybe position one here okay and then also make like the brush size smaller and duplicate it again double click on the mask make it smaller rotate it right over here maybe make it bigger and there we go now we have an animation just like this here and we can add one more here so duplicate that one make it so, and also smaller here. 
and you can fill up with as many circles as you want and change yeah everything that you want and to, yeah to make it look cool so it's completely up to you um, I'm just showing you the example and now it's up to you to make something original with it and um, so we have this okay so once you have done that you can create a new composition actually new composition here and uh, make like a thousand by a thousand so it's a nice square and rename it to logo here I'm going to um, make a circular shape tool like so press V on the keyboard click on the shape and center this okay go to the projects and then import the logo here make your logo a little bit larger and then just right click on the shape layer here to track math you can also switch uh, between the modes here and choose alpha inverted math and now if you're going to enable the uh, transparent mode here you're going to see that our logo is transparent and that's what we were searching for so uh, go back to the intro comp and import the logo so actually I'm going to rename this to logo v2 because I'm actually making this in the same composition that I made the preview in so logo v2 and there we go um, well in the entry comp paste it over here and now we have our logo so seems all right and we have the animation going okay so make it a little bit smaller like 60 percent okay okay so create a keyframe for the scale press r on the keyboard and create a keyframe for the rotation and then press u on the keyboard to reveal these two keyframes then move these two keyframes like um one second in time and then right here we're going to um, rotate it a little bit like so and make it like zero percent in scale so now we have an animation like that okay so we can actually move these two keyframes closer together so the animation is faster okay so that looks pretty cool Once you have done that, we have to do something uh, with code, but I'm going to paste the code in the description so you can just copy and paste it. Uh, so I'll click on the stopwatch of the scale and then paste the code that you see in the description. And if we're going to drag this out, you're going to see a bunch of code, but the only code you have to care about are these three top uh, codes here. So the amplitude, the frequency and the decay. So um, yeah, the amplitude is how much it's going to affect it. The frequency is how fast and the decay is when it uh, should stop. So if you're going to see this, this animation, it's going to make it clear. So the scale actually bounces a bit, as you can see, very, very subtle, but uh, actually it makes it look very cool. So I'll click on the rotation as well and paste the same code. Now we have some bouncy, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, choose the background here and go to uh, generate ramp, gradient ramp. Okay, change this to a black color and change the start color to nice, like a nice dark color here. And make it a radial ramp. And actually, the color should be. Uh, different so this should be black and this should be dark blue yeah like so okay um, there we go maybe even darker blue and there we go you can also change the color um, per channel to 16 so um, standard it's on 8 if you're going to change it to 16 you're going to get rid of the um, yeah the ramps here so if you're going to play with the ramp scatter going to help a bit and then what you can do as well is go to noise and grain and add some noise change that to 1% and you're going to see that all the ramp is going to disappear and now we have a smooth transition that's a small neat trick but if you're going to change that to 8 bits per channel you're going to see the banding here so that's not what we want so that's why I changed it to 16 then we have one more thing to do and that's right click new solid and make it white solid particles and actually for this one I, I tried something new and that's uh, with the CC ball function and if you're going to drag that 
onto our solid. Well, actually on the particle solid. So I'm going to drag and drop this on here. We're going to see a grid like this. And you can do this, you can use this for a lot of cool things. Like even for the previous tutorial that I did uh, with the futuristic hut, um, I can see this being used as a, like a pixelator. Like so, we can see a bunch of small uh, like pixels and small LEDs. So actually, you can do some cool things with that as well to make it look futuristic. Um, but for in this example, um, the only thing you have to do is scatter it up a bit, like a lot, and change the spacing to something small. The ball size, you can also make it smaller. And there we go. And now we can also, um, yeah, actually we can play with the instability state here. Um, I'm going to write time times one. Now we have a small animation in here. So how I did that is alt click on the instability state and then uh, I get the code again and then time times one. So it's a very simple code. And now we get some smooth animation in those particles, I guess. And that makes it look pretty cool, like we're in space and our logo is being brought up, so pretty cool. And then one more thing, um, I'm going to get to like four seconds and make this logo animation in a 3D layer and go to the orientation, click for the stopwatch and move like 12 frames. And then just go to the rotation tool and rotate it on the Y like so. So now we have this animation. Then bring up our text tool and like write your website. Align it in the center of our composition. Also make this into a 3D layer. What I'm going to do is actually I'm going to rotate it. Um, well, actually I have to see here. So it's going to come up from this side, so like so. We're going to rotate it like that. Also press on the orientation, make a keyframe and move ahead a few frames and then... And there we go. So now it's like it's rotating and revealing our text. So we want to make this a little bit faster to so move these keyframes closer to each other. And also uh, for these two keyframes, hold shift and select these two keyframes, right click easy ease again. And then go to the graphs editor, uh, zoom in on your timeline here. And we can bring this in here. Oh, just bring it in like so. And then if you are going to play this back, You get something like that. So we're also going to enable the um, motion blur for these two layers and enable the motion blur for the channel and also for the composition. And if we're going to animate that, you're going to see some motion blur while the animation is going. So uh, right here, you can see the motion blur and that's going to give it a more realistic feeling while it's moving. So that's pretty cool. And there we go. If we're going to play this back, we shouldn't have the complete result of the intro example and it's completely up to you so you can really do a lot of cool things with it and i would love to see them in the description so and i would love to see them so um, put them in the comments below and i would love to see what you can come up with uh, using this tutorial okay so this is our animation also right here we can still see our text a bit so um at this frame here we're going to cut the uh text off here. So we're going to edit split layer and do the same thing for the logo, edit split layer, delete this part here and this part here. So now we have a nice transition and we don't get bothered anymore afterwards. So right here also new adjustment layer and add some simple glow, stylize, glow and make it glow a little. Uh, it's always nice to have a little bit of glow. Okay, and just very subtle and duplicate it and make it like bigger
And there we go, we have our animation. So hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give it a like. Also subscribe to the channel to see more. And yeah, thank you for watching and goodbye.